Jesus Christ. The, the, the apostolic anointing that you have bound these many centuries is now loose to the church, for the church has not made herself ready. And I said, and because, and they said, oh, well, we'll be going then. And as they begin to spread their wings, I said, and you will not, but because, as according to the book of Jude, you kept not your first estate, you are to be bound with chains until the great day of the Lord. And these massive links of chains come spiraling down from above them, almost like they came down from the heavens. It's like the heavens opened up above, wow. and they came spiraling down, slapping their wings and their hands down to their sides, and wrapping around their feet and their ankles all the way up to their hands and their wings. It's like they spiraled around them, a giant spiral, and just whoo, sucked right in, locking them tightly to where they were down, stood standing, bound with these massive chains, both of them, and up under their necks to where only their heads could look up. The chains were right under their chins, making them look up. And their eyes were blinking, and instantly I was back in my bedroom in my pajamas. But now I wasn't in pajamas walking those streets. And I, I got right up from the floor. I went downstairs and began praying. I didn't want to bother my wife. And she came down. It was 4.30 that that took place, I believe, 4.30 in the morning. And uh, she came down the stairs about 7.30, and she looked at me, and she said, Is it anything that you can tell me? What happened? And I told her what happened. Well, that morning, about 11 o'clock, uh, a minister couple from uh, had lived in Portland and moved up around the Seattle area had called, and they were in town seeing some of their children. And they said, we haven't seen you for, I think this was a year, two years, whatever it was. We'd love to come by. Now, we're going to be with them for dinner, so we'd like to come by after dinner. Could we come by about 7 o'clock? And I said, well, sure, that's fine. We'd love to see you. So they were scheduled to come by, so sure enough, they came by. And I seated them on the, on the couch, and I was sitting where the phone was at my, my right hand. And as we were visiting, and sitting there starting to visit, my phone rang. I picked it up and answered it. And I can give you the person's name now. He's with the Lord. But uh, the brother said, Henry, this is Ron McKnight. Bangkok, Thailand, Vienna, Austria, Rome, Italy. Has God shown you anything in the past 24 hours? I said, yes. Can you tell me? I said, yes. Now, he was a Green Beret, okay, in the military. So this is no slouchy, limp-wristed, limp uh, what I would say, non-believing, professing Christian. No, he had been through the fire. I mean, he had been behind enemy lines again and again in Vietnam. So he had been through it. But he was a Christian, and he believed that the Lord protected his life. But uh, anyhow, he... Uh, he said, what time was that? And I told him. I told him what happened, what I saw, and what time it was that I got on my knees and was instantly in, in Rome. He said, I'll get right back to you. A click, and he's gone. The dear pastor couple looked at me, their eyes big, and said, Wow, you had that experience this morning at 4.30? I said, I sure did. And he said, Do, do you think you were translated? I said, Brother, I want to tell you something. It was so real, I'm having a hard time believing I wasn't literally there. I said, I'll tell you why. When I came back into my bedroom this morning, the first thing I did was smell the sleeves of my long sleeve pajamas. Because if you're walking in a big city like that, they will smell of diesel fumes, you know. Absolutely, I know the exact smell. And, and that's why I, 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 I thought I was literally there. And then I realized, oh, this is my pajamas. I wasn't wearing pajamas. So I thought, wow, was I translated? If I was, then God gave me different clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, 
he didn't go to Israel. He didn't have to worry about clothes. I mean, he took care of the children of Israel for 40 years, didn't he? <laughs> he must have plenty. But, uh, and shoes. Yeah, it's a good thing he pays attention to details. Right? Oh, isn't that the truth? Amen. That is so true. So uh, we were sitting and, and just discussing this, and some time later, the phone rings again. Henry, Ron McKnight. I says, yes, Ron. What is it? And he said, I just talked to Tom. I'm just going to give you first names in these because they're still alive, okay? And I'm, I, They've asked me not to give their full name, okay? But I can give Ron McKnight because he's with the Lord. Uh, I just talked to Tom in Vienna. I just talked to Jamie in Sacramento. I just talked to Dave. I won't tell you where he is. And uh, I just talked to Frank. And he goes down the line talking to, naming all six of these. Five of them plus himself, of course. And that would be seven of us. And he says, Henry, my phone's been ringing off the hook. I put down the time with Tom. I put down the time with Bob in Bangkok, Thailand. I put down the time with the brother up here in the north. I put down the time with you in Portland and the brother in Sacramento, the brother in North Pole, Alaska. Henry, guess what? Myself as well. Every one of us had identically the same experience. We calculated our time, and that's what you were the last one I called. We calculated our time. Every one of us, it would have been 4.30 in the morning in Portland, Oregon, no matter where we were in the world. We believe we were translated. We were following you. We were praying when you lifted the first iron door. I lifted the second one. I said, that's right. In the experience, you, you, you did, Ron. You, you went around and lifted the second. And he said, you stepped over and went down. I followed, and the rest of us followed. And he said, we heard your voice. We heard the authority. We never saw the big angels. But we saw you pointing to the left first and then to the right and speaking to those fallen angels. We believe we were translated because every one of us had the same experience. We all thought maybe we were in Rome. And the same thing you said to me, we, we smelled our clothing to see if we had been walking in diesel-fumed city like Rome. What do you think this means? I said, I think it means exactly what the Lord commissioned us to do. Do you realize since that time, in 19, when was that, I said? Uh, I don't have it in front of me here. Well, it was 19 years ago. So 19 it? years ago. From that time, uh, do you realize that there have been so many, so many coming forth and, and saying now, we have so many that say they're prophets, and so many are prophesying, you know, uh, so many are prophesying this and prophesying that, that you're an apostle, you're an apostle, you're an apostle. And uh, I don't know how many of them are actually apostles, but cause I have to tell you something, in my opinion, a lot of them are, are not conducting themselves as apostles. Yeah, it was November uh, 1989 at 4 a.m. in the morning. Right. 4 a.m., 1989, 4 a.m. in the morning. But, Henry, let's take that. Apostles, apostolos means master builders. And I can tell you this, every real apostle and every real prophet I've ever met doesn't go around with it on their calling cards. That's the truth. I believe that, brother. I believe that. It certainly isn't on mine. I've had a lot of people prophesy over me that I'm one. And I, I you say, know, listen, leave me alone. I'm just a simple prayer walker. And I see visions, yes, and I, God shows me some things. But he showed Abraham that, too, and you don't call him an apostle. Right. He's just the father of many nations. Well, I've got 26 grandchildren and one great-grandson. So, tell you what, maybe I, I've got many nations, too. I don't know. <laughs> well, again, the situation is, Henry, what, for those tuning in, there are people that don't really understand what's happening. Seven men, total seven, right? Six others plus yourself. That's right. 
in prayer at the same time translated to 